Hi there, my name is Cabinet Otter. I'm a variety streamer and someone with a lot of ideas. Unfortunately, most of them are pretty bad. This week's idea is absolutely not an exception to that rule, but it is a video game about other video games, so it has that going for it. This week, our game is called Guildmaster which is abbreviated just to GM. And here's your back of the box summary. In an era of warlords and would-be kings, warriors of sword, magic, and shield are called upon to fight for their alliance, battle evil monsters, and bring peace to the shattered land of Notrath. That's what it said on the box when you picked up the hottest new MMO on the market. But now you're focused on the metagame as the head of a brand new guild. As Guildmaster, you'll be recruiting, managing, and booting players. Your choices will determine the actions of individual members. Do you side with the hot-headed mage because she brings amazing DPS to raids? Do you accept that low-level tank in the hopes they'll grow into an asset? Do you bankroll guild raffles with your own gold to improve morale? Ultimately, your choices will determine if your guild fails or flourishes. Long live the GM. So the idea for this game came from a couple different places. First of all is Darkest Dungeon. If you're not familiar with Darkest Dungeon, I highly recommend go check it out. It's a great game. I think there's also a Darkest Dungeon 2 now, but I haven't played that one yet. Essentially, Darkest Dungeon is a brutally difficult game where you serve as sort of a head strategist and then you get all of these adventurers coming into your town to help you take on this evil dark, darkest dungeon, really the darkest of dungeons. And it's your job to help them train, help them deal and cope with all of the stressors they, fa they face in these dungeons. Um, and as they go on, they gain experience, they get better in each one of their skill sets. They can also be killed permanently, removing them from your pool of talent. And they can also develop traits as a result of their adventure. So this could be positive, like they're brave or they're kind or it could be negative. So maybe they develop kleptomania as a consequence of the mental strife that they're facing in this dungeon. I'm combining that concept with MMORPGs, massively multiplayer online role-playing games, which were really my start in the gaming world and something that I have always been and always will be really passionate about. And in MMORPGs, we talk about something called end game progression, which is basically once you're at the maximum level, the next sort of final chapter of content to do is to take on dungeons in the game and take on progressively harder dungeons in the game. And a lot of times to tackle the most difficult content, you need a really strong guild with a lot of great players who have done their homework to get their gear and their skills in a place where they can tackle that content. And when I say their skills, I don't just mean their skills as far as their characters in the game, but actually, you know, how well they can navigate the game's mechanics, their skills as an actual player. The other thing about guilds that I really personally love is the level of dramatic pettiness that can happen in guilds. Um, I love drama. Drama makes me cackle. It makes me laugh. I don't like being a part of it, but watching it from afar is fantastic. And the level of pettiness that guild drama is able to achieve is um, pretty top tier. There's not a lot of other types of drama I've seen match guild drama in terms of just the sheer pettiness of, you know, grown adults fighting over digital dragons or whatever it is. I'm one of those grown adults. I love digital dragons. I'm not shaming anyone. I'm just saying special place in my heart personally for guild drama. So when you combine these concepts, you get the idea of being a GM who is trying to create a guild that can tackle end game content. So you're playing this fake MMO, you started a guild, and you want to keep improving your guild to keep tackling these more and more difficult dungeons. Um, in this game, there's not going to be an actual dungeon mechanic like there is in something like a Darkest Dungeon or an actual MMO. This is just going to be kind of more of a bit life scenario where you're given choices and you manage a roster of talent. So here's an example of what one of those choices could look like. There's two potential recruits for your guild. You only have the social karma essentially to pull in one. So you've got an option here between Jacksonator and B. Changus, which is just the sort of dumb name that you run into in MMOs and it's fantastic. 
Each one of them has some stats. So these are sort of dumbed down versions of the stats that you find in MMOs tied to the three typical roles of players in dungeons, um, which is tanks, heals, and DPS. And then we also have this gear stat, which is basically just kind of oversimplifying all of the equipment that you need to accumulate in an MMORPG. You'll also see that these characters have traits. These are what they come to you with, but they can lose or gain more over time. Um, each one of these has a negative trait as well as a positive trait that can influence how they interact with you as the GM and also the other members of the guild. So here's an example of one of the decisions as a GM that you will be asked to make. Your guild has been trying to complete the hard mode version of Readout Manor for more than an hour and can't progress beyond, beyond the second of three bosses. Your alt tank bill seems to be the root of the issue and your DPS can't burn the boss down far enough to make up for his lack of gear. What do you do? So you've got a couple different options on how you can handle this, you know, ranging from wrapping up the night, helping Bill out privately, um, or just, you know, publicly embarrassing the guy, kicking him out and doubling down on your guild needing to be really aggressive about getting their gear right before they hop in a raid with you. Depending on how you handle this situation, that's going to affect your overall guild's reputation as well as your relationship with Bill and the other members of the guild. So let's say you privately ask Bill to leave the group and then you swap at a non-guildy who you happen to know and you know that they have the gear, can get this dungeon done really quickly. Um, you help Bill out, you kind of protect his reputation within the guild. The outcome of this, right, is that Bill doubles down on loyalty. He feels like you did him a really good, solid favor for this. So he's even more loyal to the guild than ever. He's also going to up his grind. So he's a little embarrassed about the situation. He wants to make sure that he never shows up for a raid unprepared ever again. So now he has this trait where he's willing to go out, grind for good gear and is going to, you know, intimately see that gear and um, his other stats tick up over time because he's doing that grind. He's putting in that work. You also see overall morale of the guild go up as you were able to complete the dungeon. So that's always good. But you do see a couple things go down. So one aggressive progression, um, you know, struggling this long with a dungeon. Definitely not something that a guild that's really aggressive about being first in endgame is going to do. Uh, those guilds get pretty serious. So not something that players who are interested in being part of the top tier uber elite gatekeeping guilds are going to want to be a part of. And also negative guild prestige. You know, you had to bring in a non guildy to complete the dungeon. Um, so just oversimplifying social dynamics, but just an example of sort of the consequences of a decision. In addition to decisions about handling raids, you also might have to make decisions about the social interactions between your players. So let's say that you did wind up recruiting Big Changus into the guild. And unfortunately, he's got this negative trait of being a little inappropriate. This is something that I do see come up in MMOs pretty often. Um, it's gotten better since I started as a player, but definitely something that pops up. And it's that sometimes people just steer the conversations to sexual or flirtatious topics, even when they're just doing like basic gear runs or whatever it is. So he's out doing a, you know, normal dungeon run with Wizzy Fizzy and she feels that he's crossed the boundaries and doesn't feel comfortable grouping with him anymore. She does indicate that she'd be willing to group with him eventually if he apologizes and, you know, genuinely changes and gets better, but definitely a very uncomfortable situation for everyone involved. So as the GM, you've got a few different options. You can kind of, you know, just go hard line, kick him out of the guild, publish a reminder on Discord about guild etiquette and standards. You can confront him privately, issue a stern warning, and then note that if it happens again, he'll get kicked. Or what if Big Chingus is one of your, you know, best players? You don't want to offend him. You don't want to risk losing him. So you go evil mode and, um, you know, just kind of endorse his behavior and don't change things at the risk of losing Wizzy Fizzy. So options. Again, the way you make these decisions and trade offs is going to impact how your guild is seen, your relationship with the individual players, your roster of talent within the guild. So just, you know, choices and consequences. 
As your guild prestige improves, you're increasing your quality of recruits. Um, so as you can see, you know, we've got some higher level players with bigger stats, better stats, better gear, and more positive traits or better traits. So just some, you know, progression over time as you make your way through that end game content map to take on harder and harder dungeons. And that's it. That's Guildmaster. Very simple little game. But uh, hopefully you enjoyed this concept. I appreciate you guys coming back to watch this week after week. And I'll be back next week with another bad idea. Hey, it's me, Cabinet Otter. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you want to see more, or come hang out with me live on Twitch. See you soon.